Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome on this fifth Sunday of Easter. It is a celebration day, for sure. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. So we have a very special occasion today uh, that is very precious. Uh, the Adkins, uh, Zachary and Grace Adkins, will be receiving their first communion today. And in, ca in case you're wondering, we made the communion bread. So this made by these two little ones. So all the communion bread we have for this week was provided by the Adkins uh, children. We are grateful for their family and we're excited. So.
So let us take a few moments to center our hearts for worship and then we will begin. Welcome everyone. Please rise as you are able and face the baptismal font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the, Can of the Candace queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. 
The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship, and all who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. reading from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Word of God, word of life. Got a little 
here. Let's hope it doesn't turn over. All right, Zach, let me sit down, okay? Say, You'll make sure it doesn't get turned over? Appreciate it. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see all of you. I'm glad to see all of you, and thanks for coming up. That's great. Um, I have a question for you. What do you need to live and grow every day? It's not a trick question. Yes, Aubrey. Water? Uh Uh-huh. And what else? Yes? Food. Right, yeah. Food and water. You definitely... Yes, Zach. Milk and water and tasty stuff, right? Most of us depend on people to... to, Hold on just a second, Grace. So most of us depend on people to help us get the food and water. Even, Even adults need to have help. Because if we live in a city... We might depend on plumbers and engineers to design water pipes to come to our houses, right? And if we're not farmers, or lucky to be farmers, kind of like Mr. Ron over there who produces a lot of of fruits and vegetables, we need people to grow stuff for us and to take care of the livestock that, that feeds us, right? And we need people to package those things. We need people to work at the store so that we can, we can buy those things. So we, we need a lot of stuff like that. So I thought of this because in our story from the Gospel of John today, Jesus talks about being the true vine, and us, we're the branches. And I was trying to think of a way to explain that, and I thought, well, that's kind of like food and water. Because if if, um, we all need food and water, just like plants do, and all of that passes through the central part of the plants, uh, that kind of goes up the root system, right? But... If the, if the branch is cut off from the tree, it doesn't get, doesn't get the food and water it needs. Kind of like this flower. This flower is really pretty, right? But it's not going to stay pretty like that for long. You know why? Because it, it got cut off. Right, yeah, because it got cut off. But it's, I mean, it's pretty now, but it got cut off. So it looks nice, but then it's going to get, it's going to kind of link, it's going to grow kind of brown and kind of wither. So Jesus... It's like that for our spirit and our community. Jesus is the center of our faith life, that he is the true vine. And so if we are disconnected from Jesus, then we can, we don't have the Jesus' love. We don't have all of that connection to Jesus. So Jesus wants us to abide in him and he will abide in us. And so when we are connected to Jesus, we have a good life because not only are we nourished in our body, but we're also nourished in our souls. And then what can we do with that nourishment we can give it to others. Absolutely, Lauren. That's, that's perfect. Yes. So when we stay connected to Jesus, then we are able to then spread God's love to everyone else. And everyone gets to thrive and grow in their life of faith. And that's our message for today. How's that? So you ready to say a prayer with me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, who is the true vine that brings us food for our souls. And water for faith. Keep us refreshed so that we can help to share your love throughout our community and the world. Amen. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. 
If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Maybe seated. Well, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As most of you may know, or at least I'm telling you now, I am definitely not a gardener. I actually killed a cactus once because I didn't water it. So that tells you what, my, what, the, what the status of my green thumb is. So when I started preparing for this final weekend to share with all of you, I wondered why God decided to throw this passage from John at me to preach on. Vine growing, fruit bearing branches that need pruning. I thought to myself, what does pruning even really mean? Turns out, Pruning is very helpful to encourage new growth and vitality for plants and trees. When you remove the less productive, maybe even injured parts of a tree or a shrub, it maximizes their ability to grow and to also fight off potential damage. Pruning encourages good growth patterns and improves the health of the plant. But then I started to think about all that we have been through the past year or so and all that is ahead of you as a congregation, yes, but also as a community and our nation. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling rather overpruned myself. Don't get me wrong, there are bright spots. We get to celebrate today with Zachary and Grace as they take their first communion. The Blessing Box continues to serve our community and so many people are excited to contribute. We've enjoyed many days of springtime sun and the blooming of trees and flowers, finally. And yet, and yet, we are still facing a difficult political season ahead. There are still people dying in Gaza and Ukraine with no end in sight. And closer to home, we see changes in our gun legislation that are concerning. We have a community that still struggles to provide adequate affordable housing, and even in this church, it is an uncertain future that is ahead of you with financial concerns that are growing. All around us, there is grief and tragedy and loss. What I mean to say is that even when there are some pockets of light, stories where life is improving, there are still so many difficult things with with which to contend with in this life. So for me, As I say goodbye to all of you on this final Sunday, I want you to recognize that you you have gone through what you have gone through and and that will continue to need some clever pruning. But then I thought this week, maybe it isn't pruning so much as it feels like we are just flat out being cut. Cut down by life's tragedies, great or small. Cut down by disappointment or despair cut down by illness or loss of a loved one or other circumstances beyond our control and we are left to wither and die. And perhaps that is why today's gospel reading couldn't come at a more opportune moment. Perhaps this is a word we need to hear in the midst of the suffering we are experiencing in the world around us. For some theologians, this passage is one of judgment and threat They see Jesus' words to abide in me to mean abide in me or else. Meaning that if you do not have absolute belief, then you're lost. But instead, especially given the significance of today, I want to look at this passage as more of a promise than a threat. And where does that direction come from? Well, it has to do with context. First, we have the context of where this conversation between Jesus and the disciples is situated in the Gospel of John. Jesus is offering these words on the eve of his crucifixion on Monday, Thursday, when he is washing their feet and encouraging them to love one another. 
Jesus knows what is about to happen, both to himself and to those who follow him. But the disciples do not. Jesus knows that their spirits are about to be crushed by his crucifixion and death, and he is assuring them that this experience will not be a mere senseless cutting, but that they will survive and even flourish. The second context is that of of the community for which John writes. By the time this community hears these words from John's gospel, they have already been scattered, likely thrown out of their synagogue, and have plenty of reason to feel like they've been abandoned. But John writes to assure them that while they have indeed been cut, it is a necessary pruning for more abundant fruit and life. Let me be clear, this message from John was likely hard for this first community to believe because there was very little evidence around them that they had not been abandoned. And no doubt it is still hard to believe on our end as well as so much of life simply weighs on our hearts with no evidence that this, is, that this pain is something that we endure to get a more fruitful future. But amid this uncertainty and distress, Jesus still invites us. Actually, not just invites, but promises us that he will not abandon us, but rather will cling to us like a vine clings to a tree so that we endure, persevere, and even flourish among these present difficulties. That is why I feel this passage is not a threat, but instead a promise from Jesus. If Jesus had only said, abide in me or else, that would not have been about Jesus' love for us. Instead, he says, abide in me as I abide in you. That is the invitation to faith. That is the promise that no matter what happens, Jesus will be with us. That no matter what happens, Jesus will hold on to us. And that no matter what happens, God in Jesus will bring all things to a good end. Now that is not to say that God wants, wants us to suffer in order to feel God's love to, or to have God's love be revealed. This is not a case where we fall into that trap of thinking, well, everything happens for a reason. Rather, it is to say that no matter what happens, we have God's promise in Jesus to work for good So as I am saying my goodbye to you all, I want you to hear this invitation to faith that resounds through today's gospel lesson. No matter what happens, Jesus will be with you. No matter what happens, Jesus will hold on to you. And no matter what happens, God in Jesus will bring all things at St. Timothy to a good resolution You are strong because Jesus will always be with you. You will survive and even flourish. Keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier, these words are said just before Jesus goes to the cross. And I would argue that the cross was not simply a part of some larger plan, but rather the chief example of God's commitment to wrestle life and hope from the very place that seems most devoid of life and hope. That is the beauty of this gospel lesson from John. Through Christ's journey to the cross, his life, death, and resurrection, we are connected to Christ just as branches to the vine. And yes, we are likely feeling a bit overpruned these days. But in these times where life seems a bit harder to live, Words like these remind us that the suffering we endure is not wasteful cutting, but pruning for a more abundant future. It is the assurance that no matter what happens, as we abide in Jesus, he abides in us and will never abandon us. Plain and simple, give me Jesus and all will be well. All will be well. I promise you. All will be well. Amen.
Please rise. confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in one God, Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, his only Son, Son of God, God eternally begotten of God God the Father, God from God, light from light, 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 true God from true God, begotten of God, 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 one being with, with the Father. Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again from the scrolls of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> 
you're invited to stand, kneel, or sit for the prayers. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Pray for the church around the world, for all ministers, and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always. For the well-being of the earth and of all created things, for rivers and lakes, streams and estuaries, melting glaciers and polluted waters, Renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness. For the nations and all those in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, and for international organizations that justice and peace may reign. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering, especially Grace Nicole Adkins and Zachary Russell Adkins on their first communion, the family of David Johns, Randy Morgenstern, Trinity Lutheran Church, Tullahoma, Pastor Alex Hoffner, Mark, Sandy, Jane, Linda, Terry, Claude, David, Paul, Charlene, Ted, Corinne, Richard, Dave, Evelyn, Scott, Steve, Elaine, Sue Ellen, Marion, Deborah, Jenny, Kathy, Gilbert, Lynn, Forrest, Robert, Sherry, Ted, Joanne, Ed, Joanne, Luann, as well as those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, and for all who seek to share your love with the world. The assembly is, in, is invited at this time to present other petitions. thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors help us like them to bear much fruit and to become your disciples and at the last bring us to that heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table
Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Oh. 
true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. living and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Please be seated. I invite the Adkins family to come forward. All right. So. The sacrament of Holy Communion is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and drink. The benefit which we receive from such eating and drinking is shown by these words. This is my body and blood given and shed for you. Namely, that in the sacrament, in the sacrament, of, in the sacrament forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation are given us with these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and foundation, or salvation. <laughs> I invite you to say the prayer with me. Those, so face the congregation. There's, you guys have a part two. We welcome you as communing members of St. Timothy Lutheran Church and the whole Christian community. Together, we will experience the mystery and wonder of Holy Communion and accept Christ's gifts of grace and salvation that come to us through this holy sacrament. So let us pray. All right, you ready, guys? So hold my hand. Both of you hold. But yeah, there we go. Gracious God, thank you for Grace Nicole 
and Zachary Russell Atkins, who stand before us now. As they grow in years, deepen their faith in Christ and their trust in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the parents and family members that support and love them and help every one of us to see ourselves, others, and the world through Jesus' eyes. Amen. Please kneel. Ready? Okay. The body of Christ given for you. Okay. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from the banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Please be seated. Well, first, a uh, th- very, very heartfelt thank you from me. I have blessed to have served you as your pastor for these many, many months that we've been together, and I am grateful for all the love and support that you provided for me, so thank you very much. I will miss all of you, but uh, we, I have faith, as I said in my sermon, all will be well for you, all will be well, and all will be well. There are quite a few announcements in the bulletin, so I will commend those to you. I know we have our the spring fling coming up next week, and you're, there are some flowers, I think, Sarah, you have them? Little flowers, so you write your blessings, what you're thankful for on the, on the, the rose or the flower, and we're going to put it all over the fellowship hall. I think the property committee will be very happy if they don't stick it on the wall. That, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, any other announcements urgent for the life of the congregation? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. And now, in order to do a, a holy leave taking, we have uh, prepared a little bit. So, Ron, would you like to come up here as well? as part of the service today. So we've included this um, and uh, encourage all of you to participate on the bolded sections uh, of this portion of the service. So Pastor Jennifer, on November 2nd, 2021, we called you to be our pastor, to proclaim God's word, to baptize new members into the church of Jesus Christ, to announce God's forgiveness to us, and to preside at our celebrations of the Holy Supper, or the Lord's Supper. With the gospel, you have, com- you have comforted us in times of sickness and trouble, and at the death of our loved ones. Sharing our joys and our sorrows, you have been important to our life together in the Church of Jesus Christ and in our service to this community. The Lord comes to everyone. Our compassion is over all God's work. All your work praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Let us give thanks for God's many blessings and for the life and ministry we have shared. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your church. By the power of your Holy Spirit, you have gathered us together in love and made us your own. Here we are, strengthened by your word, nourished by your Holy Supper, and encouraged by the journey of faith and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Continue to pour out our spirit on us that we are proclaim the good news of your love and all we say and do. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, you have called me to be your pastor and entrusted me the responsibilities of the ordained ministry in your midst. At my installation, you presented me with symbols of that ministry and I now return them to you that they may be entrusted to a new leader. I have been among you to baptize, to teach, to forgive sins, and now I relinquish the sign of this office. Just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all and through all and all.
I have been among you to proclaim the good news. I now relinquish the sign of this office. I have been among you to lead worship and preside at Holy Communion. I relinquish the sign of this office. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy birthday. You trust in God. Let us pray. Eternal God, you continually call your people to new tasks and set before them new opportunities. We thank you for your servant, Jennifer Michael in her years of ministry in our church. By your spirit, prosper those deeds done according to your will and grant her grace to continue your work in this new season of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, God. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Now let's have some fun. Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God.